This video will explore two approaches to implementing drag and drop in Godot. We'll take a simple game implemented twice, once in each style of drag and drop, and examine the pros and cons of each approach. At the end of this video, you'll have the framing as to which approach is right for the game you're building. Let's quickly speak at a high level of what this 2D game is going to look like, what are the main domain objects, and how is drag and drop utilized in this game. Here we have the tabletop, it is essentially the game world, the top controller for this game, little 2D game. Uh, game pieces is another domain object, and those are what are meant to be dragged by the mouse and drop. And the last object would be the game tile, and that's the target for dropping these game pieces. If we look at the arrangement of these pieces, the game probably starts to look familiar. The pieces are X's and O's, there's two types of those. And the game tiles are arranged in a three by three grid. So this is tic-tac-toe, also known as knots and crosses, or just simply X's and O's. So if we start to look at how drag and drop is utilized, we'll click on an X piece in this case, and that will start the drag state. And as we drag with the mouse, that X piece will be attached to the mouse. And we're in the dragging state at this point. And then finally, we arrive over one of these tiles and we release the mouse button and we're in the drop state. Okay, here we are in Godot, and again, we've implemented this tic-tac-toe game twice, once with control nodes and once with node 2D. If we go ahead and go into the control base version, let's run that. See, very, very simple setup, um, just a proof of concept. On the left is a debug output to show sort of what's going on. Here we just see the game pieces built and the game board built. We can go ahead and set a marker. As we start to drag, we start to see those control methods being fired. So get drag data has run. Within that, we set the drag preview. So we have this image of an O attached to the mouse. But again, we're in control. So Godot is really handling the heavy lift of, you know, attaching to the mouse pointer, those sorts of things. If we start to get over a drop target, here we see we're over the game tile. And we can see the other built-in method can drop data is being run and returning true or false. So we're over a game tile here, which is a drop target, so it's returning true. And if we go ahead and drop, and now we see that on the game tile, drop data has run, and it's changed the state of the game, attaching the O to this game tile in question at column zero, row two. Okay, so let's look at the code here real quick. We'll breeze through, because a lot of this is a review from the first video. The tabletop, which we're in right now, it's really just, in this case, setting up the game, setting up the pieces and the board, there's no real drag and drop logic in the tabletop for this version of the game. Where that logic is, is the game piece, which is the draggable. And here's that method provided by Godot, which it will call if the mouse clicks and starts to drag this node. It essentially returns self, which is the game piece. And that piece will be received by these other two methods we'll see in a moment. And then it also sets the preview on the mouse of the shape that will follow the mouse. So that's pretty much it for the game piece. It just has that one method to implement with regards to drag and drop. The other is where this will be dropped. So the tile, it has the other two methods implemented. So can drop data receives the game piece to kind of just inspect it and determine if it's appropriate to be dropped. It returns true or false in that case. And lastly, this method Again, called by the game engine is once the mouse button is released, that same game piece data element is given. And then it's up to this game tile to change its state to represent that it now holds a piece. So that's really it for the control version of this tic-tac-toe. Not much to it because the, the game engine is doing a lot of the drag and drop logic for us. So now let's take a look at the node 2D version of this versus the control that we just looked at. We go in there, same setup. Let's go ahead and play this. We have our debug and we see the same things happening. The game pieces were built, the board was built. Let's put a marker in the log. And now if we grab O, we get an input event on the game piece. So it detected itself that it had been clicked. And we see by that counter that every frame an, an attached a mouse a sort of event is happening. And we'll see how that's implemented pretty soon but it's happening every frame. So now if we hover over a drop target, we see another event there from the tabletop this time that it received a signal that the game tile essentially was entered by a game piece. So tabletop's keeping track of this. We still see those per frame actions happening. So if I put another marker and then release, 
quite a bit happens. So I've released the O over the game tile, and the game piece received an event signal. It was click release, so it detected that the mouse button was lifted. It emitted a custom signal, game piece dropped. Tabletop received that signal, and then from there it's in charge of sort of changing the game state uh, overall. And it informs the tile that it had a piece dropped on it. That tile will change its state accordingly. And then the tabletop will spawn a new Node 2D piece to be dragged if we so desire. So that's it for the Node 2D's just sort of game run through. Okay, so now let's look at the Node 2D version of this. It, it's, it's a bit different. We're in tabletop. Things start out the same. We're spawning game pieces, building the game board. Some of that happens differently. For instance, building the game board. We don't have a nice, in the control one, we had a control grid or grid control, forget the name of that, which handled all the layout for us. Um, this one, we have to handle that ourselves, sort of calculate that, but it gives us a little more freedom. Otherwise, we'll probably start, let's go with the game piece to see kind of what the differences are. So again, this is the game piece being dragged. It detects that by a signal. So if we look at the scene, we see that it has, uh, its collision body has input event attached to the script attached to game piece, and that's here. So anytime an input event on that collision object happens, collision shape, we come in here to sort of analyze that. If it's a mouse just clicked, we set the state of this piece to dragging equals true. If it was just released, we set the state to dragging equals false. And then we do emit a signal game piece dropped. And we'll see who catches that signal here in a moment. Again, and control the attachment of the game piece to the mouse sort of happened for us. Here we take control of that. So and we're implementing process in this case. We didn't do that in the other game. So here we're checking the state of that dragging. If it's true, we attach a mouse and we're just setting the global position of this game piece to that of the mouse. But again, setting that on every frame, checking and setting that on every frame. Very simple way to do that. So that's pretty much it here. It's the game piece detects that it's been clicked or unclicked, sets its dragging state. That helps it keep attached to the mouse. When it's unclicked, it sends the signal up the chain. If we look at the game tile, not a whole lot going on here with respect to drag and drop. Uh, we do see that it has some state methods that change its state. Someone's gonna call attach piece to it and it will change its texture to that of the piece, represent the piece that's on it. And that's probably, that's about it here. So not a lot happening on the game tile in this version. So if we go up to tabletop, that's becomes much more involved in this version of the of the game than the tabletop in the previous one. The previous, the control one, it really just set up the board and that's all it was doing. In this case, when we spawn a new game piece and also we spawn game tiles during building of the board, we attach signals to this node. So if we look here on spawn tile, we see we connect its area entered and area exited. So those come from the fact that a game tile is an area 2D. We're grabbing those two signals and attaching them locally here. The same with game piece. In that case though, we're attaching that custom signal that we saw on the game piece that it sends when it's been dropped. So we're, we're taking control of that here. And we see those methods implemented here. So on game piece dropped, we get the game piece so we can inspect it. Check the logic, say if you're over a tile, then we instruct the tile to attach. Here we see that call to attach piece. So that changes the state of the tile. If it's released not over the mouse, then we return it to the pieces holder in that case. So on the game tile area entered and area exited, again, those are those methods we attached on the tile for the fact that it's an area 2D entered, we set a state here that what tile the current the game piece is currently over so that we we know what to do when it's dropped when we exit an area we essentially set that to null so yeah this guy here we see that it comes into play here when we receive that hey i've been dropped we know where to what tile to place that on when that event happens so again all this code is in github so you can definitely dig into it but you got to get a sense of there's more to do, and there's I measured there's about 70% more code when we implement this with 
no 2Ds versus using the built-ins. With that comes more freedom as to exactly how to implement the look and feel and the behavior of your, of your drag and drop. So it comes with pros and cons. So Node 2D versus Control, which is better? Um, not really the right question to ask. They're, they're appropriate for different circumstances. So in things that are in UI, so maybe you're in a inventory ordering screen, those sorts of things, or you know a simple casual game like this tic-tac-toe where you're already in control nodes uh, in a UI sort of space, definitely want to look at control-based drag and drop first because again, Godot is doing some of the heavy lift for you, so there's a little less code to write. One other thing, though, to think of, I like to think of it as a control-based drag-and-drop is more like teleport, almost, or sending a fax. <laughs> when we're dragging, it's not the literal node attached to the mouse right now. Again, we called that set drag preview, which is really just setting an image on the mouse. It's not the, the literal node that got dragged. And then when we do drop, we're essentially, the way I have it implemented, we're taking the data from the original node and essentially creating a copy of it where it was dropped. The other thing is since we don't have the literal node drop, we can't drop it on something that's not a drop target. If we try to drop here, it just doesn't work. Whereas if we were to go into the control-based, or I'm sorry, the, the node 2D based, for instance, here, if we drop outside of a tile, we're returning. But if we just simply comment that out and then run this version, we can drop anywhere we want. Um, and the game actually will still continue to work fine. When we do drop on a tile, those correct signals happen and the tabletop resets the game state. That's another thing to think of if it's, if you're in like a tower defense that's not grid-based and you need to drop anywhere or any sort of movement that's that's in the game and not in the UI, then looking at the, you know, the, the technique for this node 2D based drag and drop is probably the right approach. That's all I had for this video. I hope now that you have a better understanding of how to accomplish drag and drop in Godot, depending on your requirements. Really appreciate it if you could leave a like, and if not already, hit subscribe and the bell icon so you won't miss future videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave them down in the comments. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.